floss tube. It's Kat from Cross Stitch Chaos. This is floss tube number 10. Uh, today is, I have to look at my phone because my watch is dead. Today's July 10th. It is at about nine o'clock at night. So I'm gonna try to get through this before people start getting home because as soon as somebody walks in the door, it distracts me and I never come back and finish the video. So um, for those who are, I, I don't know, in some sort of pit underneath a rack, I don't, I, or as my husband says, a tectonic plate. StitchCon was a couple weeks ago. I did go for the second year in a row and look, that took three seconds and candy is here. Um, this has become a running joke amongst the virtual stitchers that everybody knows Candy's butt because her butt is in every one of my videos. So um, anyway, so StitchCon was about two weeks ago and stay out of my drink. Um, so I want to go over a little bit of the stuff that I got there. I, you've already all probably seen most of it multiple times, so I'm not going to do like a whole lot of in-depth on what we got. Um, but of course I went shopping in the annex um, and I bought a lot of pretty fabrics and I know everybody loves seeing pretty fabrics. So I'm going to start out with the stuff from StitchCon. Um, what I have directly in front of me are some of the needle minders that I got. Um, they did have a needle minder exchange. And I honestly don't remember who half of these are from. I'm sorry that was that weekend was very chaotic and I lost track of who gave me what. I remember that this came from Elizabeth. It's a Ravenclaw button. Hey, I put candy down and she immediately started to fight with Oscar. Um, so Ravenclaw button from Elizabeth. Um, I don't remember who gave me the kitty. I'm sorry, I don't remember who gave me the kitty. Um, or this kitty. There were several kitties. A little gray kitty like Oscar. Um, I think the donut came from Natasha. Actually, I think the kitty came from Natasha and so did the donut. It's a cute little donut. Um, and then there was somebody walking around with needle threaders. It was one of the Canadian girls. Um, it had needle threader needle minders. Um, and I got one that has a paw print on it and it, she put two needles on it. Um, I remember that Mickey Mouse came from Heather. Link is my homeboy. Stop it! <sighs> really? Now who's she fighting? It's not Oscar. Oscar's over here. I don't know who she's fighting with. Oh, she's fighting with Hunter. Candy does not like the kittens. She never has and I don't think she ever will. Um, and then this... I don't remember who gave me this. It says handmade. I don't know if it's gonna focus, there we go. And then the back is covered with this little cloth covered button. I like that. So those were all the needle binders that I got in the needle minder exchange. I think I may have gotten one more that's on a project. That sounds about right. Hi Loki. He's pawing at my foot. So I think all the kittens might make an appearance in this video, unlike my last actual floss tube where they were just like, no, we're not gonna show up. We're just gonna meow at you. Stop tickling my foot. I'm sniffing my foot. Um, inside the annex, there was a 310 shop. If you guys have seen other people sharing that, 310 is the shop cat at Keepsakes and she is all black. That's the name 310. And there were a whole bunch of needle minders of little black kitties. Well, my little black kitty has green eyes and a green collar. So I got the one with the green heart on it. So that's my 310 needle minder. That was the only thing I got from the 310 shop. Actually, I didn't even get this. Heather got this for me. Link is my homeboy. She got that for me. She was standing in line and I didn't want to stand in line just to get a needle minder. And she was like, you let me put it in my stuff. <laughs> so thank you, Heather. I appreciate you. Um, since I'm showing you all the stuff I got at StitchCon, we'll get, we'll get the bag out. Woo! The bag. Everybody's been showing this off, the Stitch Con bag. This is a really, really nice bag. It's got like, it's got pockets with like organizers and a place to put pens or highlighters and side pockets and it zips. And it's a nice tote bag. It's nice and big inside. I've got all kinds of things in here as you can see. I'll start, oh, the bag, the gingham bag, the famous gingham bag. Um, let's see, I'm gonna pull out I don't, I'm trying to figure out what I did with all the patterns because we got like a whole bunch of free patterns. I recently found out that everybody got a different pattern from Raise the Roof. And mine is super, super cute. It is my cone runneth over. And I love that. And again, this is something that like I normally wouldn't stitch, but it's so daggone cute. 
and I can play with those colors and make them whatever I want and have a lot of fun with that. Um, all the rest of the patterns, or most of the patterns, I'm gonna pull out the ones that are not just a pattern, but a lot of them were just a pattern. I can show you this one because it's down at the bottom. There we go, Mrs. Claus's booty. Um, that is by Julie McConnell. Um, let's see here. This is from Petal Pusher, stitched together by a common thread. Um, works by ABC, Arlene Cohen. Um, Kaniki's Be Joyful Always. Uh, barefoot Needle Art, Stitch in the Hand. It says Toes in the Sand, Stitch in the Hand. Nice little beach themed one, I like that. Um, and then these are all these you can't see, but it's um, one's from Luminous Fiber Arts, um, one is from Shakespeare's Peddler, and one is from Heart and Hand. So those were all the free patterns that were in our envelope that when we got there with our, um, came with our passport and our itinerary, and there was a nice list of stuff to do in the area. It was very well put together, for, especially for the people who were from out of town. Um, it was very well put together to help them figure out where to eat, where to, you know, where to go. Oh no, my cookie broke. Oh no, this is a sad day. Um, I'm going to show this because I have it in my hand. This was something that appeared on my table um, while I was gone. It is from Barb and Leanne and Lost and Floss. They made us little Wisconsin cookies. And I haven't eaten mine yet because I was waiting to show it in my video. And then I, I apparently broke it, so I'm going to eat this tonight. Um... Every time you came back from anywhere, you'd come back and there'd be like a bunch of stuff sitting on your table as people were just like walking around. Oh, this is from Lindy Stitches. This one, this is something else that showed up on my table. The cute little turtle that I know a couple people have already made. They're way more organized than I am. Um, but anyway, every time you came back from like, you'd go to like lunch or something or me being me, I, I'm not an early morning person. So like I'd get there whenever I got there and there'd be like all kinds of stuff sitting on the table from people that walked past. Um, I somehow ended up with like three pralines. <laughs> These were in our, in our, uh, our bag. Um, we were supposed to get one. I somehow, I don't know, I think people left them on the table and I just picked them up because I will feed them to my husband because he eats everything. Um, this is a magnet. Obviously, Pam and stuff. And then they also gave us their drawing. Their caricature. Um, this is from Corey, the silent stitcher. Cool little business card. I didn't really, I didn't get a chance to really meet her. There was just too much going on. I did a lot of driving people. Um, and so like, I feel like I wasn't there very much because I did a lot of driving people back and forth to the airport. I don't think I'm going to do that as much next year. Um, I know a lot of people appreciated it was, you know, not having to pay for an Uber, but, um, I, I mean, I will admit that I made good money doing it because I told people, you know, if you want to give me gas money, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. And I ended up making a decent amount of money. Um, but I feel like I missed half of StitchCon, so I'm not going to do that again next year. Or if I do, it's only going to be on Wednesday and Monday. I, I don't want to actually miss StitchCon. Because um, I, I did a lot of driving on Thursday and again on Sunday. And I really, like I said, I missed, I feel like I missed a lot of StitchCon. And I don't want to do that again. Um, sorry, my eyes are watering. My allergy meds aren't working. Um, this is a, a thing of stickers from Katie Clark, the nap, nap time stitcher. I think that's super cute. There's like a little floss. These are all stickers. And I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but they're cute. This is also a sticker from End of the Sea, Leslie. Um, I think that's all my little loose stuff. We got the StitchCon 2019 logo designed by Sue Hillis. This is a pattern on the back. Um, it says you're welcome to share it with other stitchers, so yeah, that's the pattern on the back. Um, okay, hang on, I gotta organize myself. Okay, StitchCon Passport. They did the passport again this year. Um, I'm trying to figure out what's on the bottom of it, I think more business cards. Yep, more business cards. Like I said, every time we came back there was like business cards and magnets and stickers and all kinds of stuff that was just placed at our um, spot. 
Um, so they did the StitchCon Passport again this year uh, where there was a question. Oh, that's from Sunshine Stitchers. Um, or a, a fact about each of the um, floss tubers. I did not finish mine because I just didn't have time. I was too busy, you know, experiencing StitchCon as much as I could. Oh my goodness, my eyes driving me crazy. Um, but they they gave us just plain stars and then a lot of people like me i got i went and got owl stickers um because my question was involving um harry potter so um a lot of people had like different things that they signed it with like there's Rika's house of stitch and stash she gave us a wine glass and a little instagram stamp um let's see if i can find any that i really did not get very many of these done <laughs> Um, well, let's see, Floss Tuber's been taking a break from filming, that was Polly, she had a starfish, um, Cindy Sneezy Stitcher had a taco, um, Lorraine from Rags to Stitches, we had her, her answer, or her fact was about her becoming a case, a social worker for um, foster children in the foster care system. And for those who have watched some of my earlier videos, you would know that my husband and I are, have already gone through the um, process once and are going, are, are having to restart it um, to be foster parents. So she and I had a really amazing conversation. We both ended up crying, um, talking about foster children and, and how hard and yet how rewarding it is to work with foster children and, and how much uh, my husband and I are very dedicated to the cause that eventually we will be foster parents. Um, so thank you, Lorraine. That's one of my, actually one of my fond memories from StitchCon is that conversation with you. So um, this was also in our bag from Ulalu Handmade Kids. Um, it's a little Ohio ornament with a little heart down on the corner for Cincinnati. Wow, why is my hand all shaky? I don't know. Um, everybody got one of these. I saw, I went onto her Instagram which I'm pretty sure is the Ulalu Boutique right there. I'll link it down in the description. Um, but I looked at her Instagram. She said this was the biggest order she'd ever done. So that's really awesome for StitchCon to be supporting um, a small, small business artist. Um, and then we also got these really fantastic journals. And a lot of people were writing in them. Um, I don't know, my problem is that like it's too pretty to write in. I have this problem with stuff like this. Get out of my drink. Candy's back. Um, but this very, very nice stitch con journal and it's got a bookmark and it's very pretty. I don't know, I don't know what I'll write in it. Cause I don't, I, I'm really bad about not using pretty journals like this and I just kind of hold on to them and then I'm like, you know, I should use that cause that's what it's made for. Um, it's itinerary, that's it. Um, I ended up going to Kings Island with Cindy, Sneezy Stitcher, and Heather, Link was my homeboy, for a few hours. It was so ungodly hot, we didn't stay long. Heather just wanted, Heather Heather is obsessed with the blue ice cream at Kings Island, the famous, it's um, blueberry ice cream, um, also called Smurf ice cream, because it looks, you know, back in the day, Kings Island had a Smurf ride, and so the blue ice cream was the Smurf ice cream. and. For the last, I don't know, two months, every time I talk about Kings Island, because that's where I work, in Virtual Stitchers, Heather's like, I want some blue ice cream. She apparently went through two pregnancies craving blue ice cream and had not had it since before her oldest son was born. So we went to Kings Island and got her blue ice cream and she was like a toddler. She was like, ice cream! It was hilarious. She ended up having it twice. She got it in a cone the first time and it was like dripping all the way down her arm because it was 97 degrees outside. It was really funny. Oh, I almost forgot this. This is from Leslie at Under the Sea. You can see the sticker on it. Um, when you got her her uh, sticker for the passport, you pulled a colored token, and depending on what color you got was what color your bag was. So my token was blue, and it came with a little giraffe needle minder with some needles in it, a little carabiner clip and the narwhal pattern, which I'm just gonna flash peel and stabby, which I'm definitely gonna be stitching because it's hilarious, and a magnet. I'm gonna stick that on my fridge. I'm gonna pull that out and stick it on my fridge. Put that all back in there. Candy's back. How many times did I 
This is, I'm gonna start keeping a tally of how many times I delete candy during each of my, uh, each of my videos. Okay, so moving on to teas. Uh, I'm pretty sure the only thing in here, I've got two things of floss from Color Cotton. They're the same color. It's called Galactic. No idea what I'm gonna do with it, but it was too pretty to pass up. There we go. Or get my head out of the frame so you can see it. It's blues and purples. Super pretty. Like blues and purples and teals. Uh. All right, and then the pretties. This is what everybody's favorite part is, right? Seeing all the pretties. Uh, I did some damage. I only got one color in cotton. Um, I waited until the second day of the annex because there were so many people and only one uh, Barbara uses a tablet with a square reader and there was only one of them. And so even though she had kind of like an assembly line going where one person was cutting, one person was totaling, one person was looking at prices, there's still only so much you can do with one cash register basically. So the line was crazy. Like people were waiting an hour to an hour and a half. Um, I waited about 45 minutes and I, like I said, I was there during the second day. So like a lot of things got bought out. There was no even weave left, um, but there were a lot of pretty colors still. Um, there was very little color in cotton, um, but I did pick up this, uh, it's 40 count Newcastle linen in onyx. Um, it looks kind of like chalkboardy. There we go. You can see the modeling in it. Get out of my drink. First she rubs her snot on me, then she sticks her nose in my drink. Like really? My candy. She's gonna knock my camera over. Oh, hi Loki. I almost dropped her on Loki's head. <laughs> there are water dishes directly behind me. Um, they have a little like water fountain because if, if I give them just a normal bowl, they play in it and they knock it over and they splash water out. So I got them one of the little water fountains so that it's continuously running. And now they mostly behave with it. Um, I have to refill it like every three hours though because they drink it so much. That's what happens when you have five cats. Okay, so on to the pretties. Um, these are the only two non-opalescents that I got, so I'll start with them because I'm obsessed with opalescent fabric. This is Lapis. Lapis. I'm, I don't know. I've, I've heard this pronounced so many different ways. I call it Lapis. Um, this is 32 count linen. And it's a very pretty blue. It's got some darker sections down here in the corners. That looks like a winter sky to me um, or an ocean. Maybe I'll do, if I ever do a Mirabilia mermaid, this would be a good one to do it on, I think. Or just a Mira. I've been looking at Miras because I love Stitching Lady of the Flag so much. And I was like, oh, I wonder if there's any other Miras that I would like. And so, um, once I'm done with my chart buying ban, um, probably the first thing I'm gonna buy is Royal Holiday, which is um, the, one of the winter queens. Uh, this is Vampiric. This is a 20 out count, 28 count Lugana. This I think is the only even weave that I got. This like hot pink. Oh, it matches my shirt. Check that. Well, my, my shirt's actually red because it's an Ohio State shirt, but it's like hot pink. I'm trying to, I've got my overhead light on. So I'm trying to like keep the glare off of it but it's got like some grays and dark purple. And I don't know, I don't know what the heck I'm gonna stitch on this. It just spoke to me. I was sending pictures to Deborah until my phone died. I was doing a video conference with, I was doing a video chat with her. So she could be like, I want that one and I want that one and I want that one. And she said, uh, I'm not big on that one. I was like, I am. So it went in the basket. Um, we have a combined fabric stash. For those who don't know, Deborah is my roommate um, slash sister slash best friend. We're very close. Um, and she is also a stitcher. She may be starting her own floss tube soon. I know she's reserved a name, um, but she hasn't actually done any videos, um, but she hangs out on virtual stitchers with us all the time. So um, she only started cross stitching about a year ago, uh, but she's as in love with Leslie's fabrics as I am. So this is Artemis. This is a 32 count opalescent linen. And it's all very purple. It reminds me of a darker version of Midsummer Night. Of, well, of the Midsummer Night that I'm stitching Death by Cross Stitch on. Because I bought another thing of Midsummer Night and it's much darker. And I'm really glad, I actually really like 
the the version of Midsummer Night that I got, but I'm really glad that I got the piece that I have because it's too perfect. So this is Shimmering Azure. This is a 32 count of Lessent Linen. So you can see I got quarter yards of most of these. There's not a whole lot of modeling in it, but it's a very, very vibrant turquoise. And again, looks like kind of like an ocean, would look awesome with a mermaid on it. I think this would probably be better for a mermaid than, than the lapis, actually. This is Moonlit Waters, 28 count opalescent linen. Beautiful purple. It's very dark. It's actually showing up lighter on the camera. It's a very dark, let me see if I can get, there we go, you can kind of see it. Beautiful color. And I love the, the starburst effect from down here in the corner. Absolutely beautiful. It's got a little bit of a blue, to, uh, blue tone to it in some places. Again, no idea what I will stitch on this. We just stash fabric and then when we want to stitch something, we go through our fabric stash and go, oh, look, that's perfect. Um, this is Fiery Skies. I got a piece of non-opalescent last year, and this year I found opalescent. This is 32 count linen. Very, very pretty. Reminds me of a volcano erupting. No, I love it. Again, I think it would look awesome with a mirror on it. Um, I think I'm gonna do, when I do Royal Holiday, um, she's wearing a gold dress with a red, velvet like velvet looking cloak i think i'm going to convert that to purple um and then i may put her on i may put her on this i don't know we'll see um this is amphitrite learned that that's how you pronounce it from leslie this is a 32 count opalescent linen we got the entire half of this because it is one of those fabrics that could be used for so many things it's got teal and purple. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of um, the what I'm stitching Lady of the Flag on, which I can't remember the name of that one now, Avalon. Um, they had Avalon, but the dye was more yellow. It, that, that dye lot had come out a lot more yellow than my Avalon on um, Lady of the Flag. So we got this one because this is like the, it's a similar dye minus the yellow. So that is Amphitrite. Um, this one we also got a half yard of. This is Midsummer Night. As I was saying, this is a different dye um, than the Midsummer Night that my Death by Cross Stitch is on. This is a 28 count opalescent linen. And you can see it's much darker and it has a lot more modeling to it. Mine's a very even dye um, with just a little bit of color change to it, whereas this has gorgeous modeling in it. Um, and each corner of it is different. It's got more pink in this corner with less modeling. This one's got more blue in it. So we decided we needed to get the entire half yard of it because it's just too pretty. And they had one that had, that was more like my Death by Cross Stitch that was less modeling, but I sent both pictures to everyone. I was like, I like this one better. She's like, oh uh, yeah, that one. The one with the bottling in it, it's gorgeous. Um, and then this is the last one. This is Uplifting Currents. Um, this thing is so stunning, I can't get over it. It is 32 count opalescent linen. We got the entire half. Look at this, gorgeous, like, oh, beautiful deep turquoise. Um, like, we may have to order more of this. You wanna talk about perfect for a mermaid. Look at that gorgeous teal. It's so vibrant. That's one of my favorite things about all of Leslie's fabrics is they are super, super vibrant. Like all of her, her colors, none of them are faded out or washed out or they're just all so vibrant. Oh, Candy was like back there and now she's here stealing my drink again. I'm drinking chocolate milk uh, because uh, my teeth hurt and they don't feel like, get out of my drink. They don't feel like having pop right now. So I'm drinking chocolate milk. And Candy's obsessed with it. So there's my stash acquisitions, because I don't like the word haul. I think it sounds stupid. Um, no offense to anybody that uses it. I'm just not a fan of saying haul. I don't know. These are my stash acquisitions, AKA crap I bought. But guess what's not? Guess what's not in here? Any charts, because I was a good girl. 
there were like 13 trunk shows. And I just said, no, nope, I'm not allowed to buy any. The Sue Hillis one tempted me. Sorry for all the crinkly. Sorry, not sorry. Um, because I love Sue Hillis's patterns, but, and there was a couple others that I was like, well, these are really pretty. No, I don't need any more charts. I don't need them. Rosewood Manor was there. I remember that was one that caught my eye a lot. Okay. Speaking of acquisitions, um, I took some stuff to keepsakes to be finished. Um, two of these are pieces you've never seen before. Um, one of them is one that I showed in my last video as a finish. Uh, I've never had anything finished before. Get out of my drink. Goodbye. Anyway, um, I've never had anything finished before. I've always had everything framed. And I was like, you know, I've got some stuff that I don't really want to get framed, but I want to have like around my house, you know, displayed rather than just in a drawer. And I think in my next video, I'm going to show you all my drawer shame because I've got a heck of a drawer shame. Um, so I was like, you know, I'm going to take these to keepsakes and have them finished. And I'm extremely pleased with how they came out. So here is Halloween's, which you saw in the last one. And this is a flat fold. So it can sit wherever my sister-in-law wants. There's the backing fabric. And the little cording on it is perfect. Perfect colors. So there's Halloween so nice and finished, courtesy of Barbara Keepsakes. I'm extremely pleased with that. Um, the other one was, um, I've been, I've had this piece finished for several years and I wanted to give it to my cousin. My cousin has a lot of my grandma's old dollhouses and my grandma had started this piece and then I finished it and I didn't know how to like FFO it. Um, so I took it to Barbara and she put it on a hard backing and it looks like it's just kind of like glued down like a sticky backing with a velvet back. It is an oriental rug. It's a little dollhouse rug. And she put the little fringe. She used the Ada to make the fringe. I had made the fringe on, on the short ends and then she made the matching fringe on the long ends. And it's it's hard, so but it'll lay flat. So there's the back of it. It's like a velvet so it won't slide, but it'll lay flat in a dollhouse. So my grandma had started this and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a little bit of a color shift Right, you can kind of see it right here. There's a little bit of a color shift. That's how far down she had stitched the red and then she had stitched part of the gold border. And then I think, actually, I think she had done the border all the way around, the inside gold border all the way around. And then I finished all of this. I think she'd done the center maybe, or part of the center. And then I did the entire outside. Um, so this is a fun, this is now two pieces that my grandma started that I'm finishing. And this one I have finished. So there's my oriental rug. And that's going to be a Christmas gift for my cousin this year. And then the last piece that I got finished is the Great Smoky Mountains National Park sign. And I bought this from, I can't remember the name of it. It's not there anymore. I know that it used to be in Wares Valley um, in Tennessee, uh, which is outside of Pigeon Forge. Um, they had a whole collection of um, Smoky Mountain themed things. I've also got a pretty, like a big picture um, kit that is Cades Cove in the fall. Uh, but this one, this was just the, uh, this was just the pattern. Um, actually, I, I think I picked this pattern up from Obergatlinburg, one of the shops in Obergatlinburg. And then that's when I found out that the designer had a shop and I went to that shop and picked up the Cades Cove one. Um, but I don't believe that shop is still in business. Um, I went past it about two years after I bought this and it looked like it was closed. Um, so I don't know if it moved or if it's closed completely. I don't remember the name of it. I just remember it was in Wears Valley. It's not Dixie Darlin. Um, it was stitching, stitching something, stitching cabin maybe. I don't know. But anyway, so there's the Great Smoky Mountain National Park sign. That's the old version of the sign. Um, I know that's weird that I know that, but I lived in the Smokies for four years, so... Um, I lived in, I lived in Sevierville, which is just north of Pitch and Forge in Gatlinburg. And amazingly, Millie never went to Dixie Dollar. So, um, this has, it looks like the bags. It's the green gingham of the bags on the back. And it is made so that it can hang. And that's gonna, now that I've shown it in my video, it's gonna hang up on the wall. 
So those are the three FFO pieces that I've gotten. I've not finished anything since you last saw me. Oh, hey, look, another needle minder. I think this came from Cupcake Stitcher, pretty sure. That's the Hogwarts crust. And I'm pretty sure this came from Cupcake Stitcher. Um, I also have not put together my make and take, which is the scissor fob with the little bus charm and a little 2019. For those of you who haven't seen, um, Barbara bought a bus this year and it was painted red and it said the Stitchy Bus. And they used the Stitchy Bus to shuttle between the hotel and um, keepsakes. So that was, um, I don't know why, what, what possessed them to buy a bus, but that was pretty awesome, Stitchy Bus. I did not ride the Stitchy Bus because I had a car. Um, and I didn't want to deal with the insanity of keepsakes. So, last time I showed you guys some of my project bags, I have since um, posted a bunch for sale. I discovered that Instagram doesn't notify me if people send me messages on my non-primary account. So like I use um, my Cross Stitch Chaos account as my primary account. And then I had a secondary account, which was my, um, my sales page, Buckeye Boutique and I was not getting notifications about people sending me private messages and I wasn't getting notifications at all of people commenting or liking or anything like that. Um, and so it's really hard to do sales if I don't know that people want things. So I have pulled everything from my Instagram and it is now, get away from my drink. Um, it is now all on my Facebook page, which I will link below. Um, it is also the Buckeye Boutique. Um, I posted a whole bunch of Harry Potter stuff up there. So I've got like Marauder's Mat bags. I've got, um, I don't think I've posted the house bags yet because I haven't finished Ravenclaw bags yet. Um, but I have like this one. This one's up there. I'm currently using it. <laughs> Give them a bad girl. Um, that's the house crests. And all of mine, like I said, are the top zip. Um, they are lined. They are interfaced. So they will, they're a little, they're stiff enough that like if you put paper in them, the paper's not gonna get all crinkled up. Um, this has Lady of the Flags beads in it, as you can hear. Um, but they're not like, like this is a really stiff one. This one could stand up on its own. I don't use this interface anymore, it's too stiff. Um, anyway, so there's my little my little plug that's that I'm selling. I also have Grime Guards. A lot of them are batching. A lot of them are not made yet. If you want a specific size, you do need to ask. It may take me up to a week to finish them uh, just because I work and don't have time to stitch or don't have time to sew very much. Okay, so onto the whips. Finally, inside of the Ravenclaw bag is still my Hade, my little mini. So this is Mini Cries of the Night by Julie Fain, charted by Heaven and Earth. It will look like this. Last time you saw it, it looked like this. And now I'm to the edge of the moon. Um, I was gonna try to do the 90 days full coverage fanatics challenge. I don't have time. I don't have time to stitch every day, especially in May. I, I fell off the wagon very early on. Um, a lot of it also is I'm tent stitching this. This is my first time doing a piece tent stitch. I'm not really a fan of it, and I think it's because I'm doing it backwards from what most people tent stitch, and so I'm doing it the way that my top leg usually goes, so that it looks finished to me rather than than looking like a half stitch. And I'm also trying to do it diagonally to keep from uh, forming lines in it, and I don't know what it is about it, but it makes my head hurt to think about. I don't know. And I've made a lot of mistakes in it, and I've had to do a lot of ripping. And but that's where it is now. You can, you can't even tell the tent stitch. That's nice. That's two over one on twenty-eight count. My notions toad is my Beauty and the Beast one because I have the thread for I have the uh, silk for my death by cross stitch in my Beauty and the Beast bag, so it didn't need a notions tote. The notions tote's hanging out right with me. I also make nap matching notion to notions totes for pretty much all of my bags, so. Um, inside Marauder's map, here is Marauder's map. Um, inside of it is the Hogwarts crest. It's been a while since you've seen this one. This is what it looked like before. I have made a lot of progress on it. I worked on it during um, the 24 hours of cross stitch back in April. I believe it was take two that I worked on. I didn't do the full 24 hours. I got really close though. 
Um, but I put like 2,000 stitches into it during that period of time. And there it is. So I've got this entire half of the scroll work is finished and backstitched. Um, the center part is finished and backstitched and now I'm working on the scroll work on the side and then there's some scroll work up here and then the top half will be finished and then I can head down. And this might, I'm, I don't know, I'd like to finish this this year. Um, this is one of two projects that I think I can realistically finish, sorry, three projects I can realistically finish this year. And I really, really would like to get back down to 10 whips. Oh, hey, look, things. These came from the freebie table. This is a kit, um, Expressions by Busilla. It says, a house full of friends is a house full of love. Um, a little, um, a, a little, I don't know, it's very 90s, but um, it's cute. And I always have a ton of people at my house, so. Um, and then this is, I don't even know who this is by. It's kitted. Oh, the creative circle. I'm guessing this is an out of print. Yeah, 1987. So this is a significantly out of print, um, but it's called merry-go-round. Somebody found that on the table for me because they know me and my addiction to carousel horses. Um, one day I'll actually stitch some of these like a million carousel horses people keep giving me. Okay, so next on the whips, Death by Cross Stitch. Death by Cross Stitch has had a lot done since you last saw it. So here's how it looked before. And hang on a second, let me uh, put my needle through so that I don't have this. Ugh, I have cat hair everywhere on this piece. Okay, um, here's how it looks now. Look at that. I've got that top corner border almost finished. Still absolutely beautiful variegation. This, um, this side right here is what I worked on during StitchCon um, because it was fairly mindless. Uh, it's one color, I just needed to count, and it's a repetitive pattern, so I worked on this a lot during StitchCon. So there's my progress. I Before I only had the top two borders finished, now I've got that corner. This is very clearly not a focus piece on me. It's had about 2,000 stitches put in it since you last saw it. Um, I'll work on it more when I don't have so many whips that I'm trying to get finished. Um, Lady of the Flag. I'm not going to unscroll her. I unscrolled her last time. Um, she has not had, I would say, significant progress done, which is a little unfortunate. I don't know why. I just haven't. I've been struggling on focusing on working her on her, and I think it's because I'm tired of working in the gold dress. So here's where she is now. Here's where she was before. Here's where she is now. So this, this section here comes down and across right through here and then the end of her dress is right about here. Um, and then it says Liberty and has the florals around it. So I am getting pretty close. As you can see, I bead as I go. I've gotten a lot of bead work done since you last saw her. Um, there's so many beads in this section um, and I don't like beading. So at least I don't like, I don't like beading on this because it's 32 count and the uh, I'm using regular mill hills because I didn't know about needing to switch to delicas, so I'm having to delete and wiggle and all kinds of stuff, so I'm not a big fan of the beading, but but there she is, my little American flag needle minder hanging over there. Okay, so that's Lady of the Flag. Um, and then my other piece I've been working a lot on... I say other piece. I've been doing a lot of work on a lot of things. Um, this is the piece that I'm doing as a focus on focus on a finish, and then I'm going to focus on a finish with Lady of the Flag. Um, this is Beach Romance by Jamlin, and last time you saw it, it looked like this. It's now had about 2,000 stitches put in it, and it looks like this. So I've done all of this over here and some up here in the frame. But that is like crazy confetti, so it's very slow going. I mean, like, there'll be like 12 stitches in each color and then I've changed colors uh, because there's no other stitches anywhere near it in that color. Um, 
it's just, it's very slow going. It's taken me four days to get a thousand stitches. I can usually do a thousand stitches in a day. Um, I worked on this for three hours last night and only got uh, 300 stitches in it. And that's very slow for me. I usually stitch 300 stitches in an hour. Uh, I'm so sorry, my nose is just so, like, so crazy. Oh, hi, Oscar. Oscar's lying on the floor beside me. Oh, that's not cool. Something has been spilled in this. Thankfully, it is on a section of the fabric that doesn't really matter, but I'm going to have to pull it off the scroll frame and watch it. Um, this is my Heaven and Earth. This is Wisdom by Sherry Gerhardt. This is the Ravenclaw Crest. Last time you saw it, I had just finished working on it from Stitch Away, where I had finished a page. So this is what it looked like before. And here it is now. So I have done a lot of filling in. I had a gap right here that I filled in and I have been coming down through here. Um, you can start to see this brown right in here is the edge of the Golden Eagle's head, which the Golden Eagle is the symbol for Ravenclaw. Everybody thinks that it's a raven. No, it's not, it's an eagle. And that's just because eagles are prettier. I remember reading an interview with JK Rowling about why they always, um, have some variety of eagle or bird of prey rather than an actual raven for raven clone it's because they're prettier okay um stitching george washington i've gotten about two pages finished i can't remember if it's two full pages or almost two pages i don't know but here's a lot what it looked like last time and here is now it is still a bunch of dark green and dark blue I mean, there's not much too exciting about it. Um, this is page, it has to be page eight. Yeah, because nine and 10 will finish this top row. So this is page eight. I'm pretty sure I just finished page six last time you saw it. Um, so I'm gonna try to finish that. That's like a day's worth of work to finish that page. Um, I am still massively behind. Um, uh, Vicki came up with a really good idea. Vicki read, reading and stitching um, came up with a really good idea. She's also working on it and she is also behind. And so the idea that she had was figure out how many pages I need per month um, to, to finish on time and do those pages in a marathon and just, just get them done. Um, and I really like that idea because then I don't have to worry about it the rest of the month. So I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on finishing this page um, this week and then I'm gonna figure out how many pages I need starting with July um, which July is almost half over. So maybe I'll start with August. I'll start with August and then maybe I'll try to get ahead. Um, but I'll figure out how many pages I need to finish every month to finish on time. And I will like try to knock those out right off the bat. Um, and then my last whip is something you guys haven't seen in a long time. You haven't seen this on a frame even. Um, last time it was, I just out and laid it on, get out of my drink. I just laid it on table. Um, I've added about 700 stitches to it. This is Magellan at Cloud. This was the first Heaven and Earth I started working on. Everything I added was black. That's all I've put into it is black right here. And I think I put a little bit of black up here. Um, I want to go ahead and fill this gap in right here. That's going to be my next goal. Uh, but there was a Magical Stitches extra credit that was stitched 500 stitches in black. And I went, hey, I've got the perfect project for that. So I pulled out Magellanic Cloud. Um, unfortunately, I only have three sets of these sidebars. So I had to pull my Chatelaine off of um, this set of sidebars. So my Chatelaine has not been worked on since before my last video. Um, there is a gnat flying around my camera. That's irritating. Um, so that is all of my, all of my whips uh -huh. and all of my stuff. Wow. I actually like got to the point in this video. Um, for those who don't know, since my last video, my last video was in April at the beginning of May, I took over as one of the administrators for the School of Magical Stitches. So I no longer get points for my homework. So I have not been doing my homework. <laughs> I will admit that. Oh, here comes a kitty. Come here, Oscar. Oscar. Come get your nose out of her butt. Come here. I'm trying to bring you. There we go. This is Oscar. This is my kitten. This is, this is the, this was, we call him Little Bit because he was always the smallest of the kittens. Isn't he cute? He's adorable. Um, but we, we have always called him Little Bit because he's little. He was the smallest of the kittens and now he's, you know, a cat. 
and we confuse him for normal on occasion because they are the exact same color and he's gotten so big that we can confuse him with normal. Hey, jerk. No, get off my stitching. Candy really does not like the kittens. Um, I wish I had the other two. Loki. See if I can get some kittens while I talk. Um, anyway, so I took over as one of the admins. I no longer get points for my homework, so I haven't been keeping up on it. Um, for those who are in Magical Stitches, we did just release um, the extreme year-long extra credit because there are people who actually finished their year-long ultimates. I only finished, I just finished number nine of 22 of the ultimates, um, which are the ones that are a thousand stitches. Um, and then we also f uh, released a, what did we call it? Outrageous headmistress uh, points for no reason because the, the, the the logic behind it, for those who don't know this, is at the end of the year, Dumbledore was kind of famous for giving out random points so that Gryffindor won. And it was always for like really weird reasons, like the 10 points to Neville that gave him the, the house cup the first year. And like, it, it, this is kind of, it's what Dumbledore did. And so this is this is me and Vicky giving our random points for, for whatever reason we want. So we came up with a challenge that we honestly don't think anybody's going to be able to complete because um, those that have done the math on it have realized how almost impossible it is. It is one stitch for every word in all of the books combined, which is over a million words. And it started either yesterday or the day before, I think it was the day before yesterday that we started this. In order to finish a million words by the end of the year, or a million stitches by the end of the year, you have to stitch over 6,000 stitches a day. I don't know how to be that stitches that fast. <laughs> I think there are gonna be some people that try it and I think there's gonna be some people who come really close, but I don't think anybody's gonna actually make it. If they do make it, it is 500 bonus points on top of the points that you get for finish finishing the challenge, which is 543. Um, it is a, um, every stitch counts, every stitch you do for homework, every stitch you do for extra credit, every stitch you do for ultimate challenges, everything you do for outside groups, everything counts. Um, and it's one point per 2,000 stitches. That's the reason it is so low is because everything counts. So the double tipping, it's it's literally just extra bonus points because we can, because we're the headmistresses, because it's what Dumbledore always did. Well, because we can, we can just give you points. Um, so if you finish all million, you would end up with 1,043 points for your house. And that would be enough probably to take the house cup for that for the last year. So we wanna see if anybody actually makes it. Um, I think we're gonna have the people who can do like four and 5,000 stitches. I think they're gonna get close. Um, I'm doing it even though I'm not getting points. I just wanna see how close I can get. Um, I've been tracking on semi-sane stitchers. I'm doing the stitching through the universe. I am over halfway finished with Saturn, which is 73,000, 74,000 stitches. And I'm at like 50. So I wanna kind of like sit down and focus on getting that one finished. Cause I still think, I think I'm still, I'm still on track to be the first one finished with Saturn. Um, there's a fly. I don't know where the bugs are coming from. They were not here five minutes ago. There's Loki. Loki, come here. Yeah. He doesn't meow. It's the cutest thing. He goes, <laughs> come here, come here, come here. He's thinking about it. Come here, Loki, come here. Come on. You're tall enough to jump up here. Come on. This table is bar height, so it's like really hard to grab down, uh, grab a cat on the floor. This is Loki. Isn't he cute? There we go. You can't, he's not looking at the camera, so you can't see his pretty green eyes. But this is Loki, and Loki is gigantic. Loki is gigantic. He's my big kitty. I can't believe these guys are only nine months old. Actually, no, they're, they're 10 months old now. They just turned 10 months old. So they're not quite kittens. They still act like kittens. They're just not the size of kittens anymore. But this is this is my baby. Um, we've all bonded with one of the kittens. Um, Loki is my baby. Oscar is Deborah's baby, and Hunter is Nick's baby. Um, Loki has this like super long tail. This tail is ridiculous. Um, but he always wants to lay and snuggle and cuddle with Mama. And hey, stop stealing things. Yep, he's a kitten still. 
Because <laughs> he's he wants to play with everything. And now he's investigating everything on the table. He's sniffing the fabric and he's sniffing the patterns and he's got his head in my bag. Because he's a kitten. Um, anyway, so I think I'm going to go ahead and close this out. The only kitten you haven't seen yet is Hunter and now Loki is in my fabric bag. <laughs> he doesn't fit, but he's trying. Um, so... I don't have a cool sign off. Stitch M was talking about this, how she doesn't have a cool sign off, so it just ends in randomly. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's how mine is too. Um, so I will try to get another, I always say I'm going to try to get another video up in a reasonable amount of time. It never actually happens. Um, I'm only on video 11 and I've been doing this for a year and a half, so I'm very inconsistent. But at least I am posting them. I post them whenever I can. Um, it's just hard to find time when I'm at home alone and have the time and I'm willing to get all my stitching out and my camera is charged and 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 and. So if I if I do another video in a short period of time so I think that's why I didn't do one in May is I didn't stitch hardly at all in April and so like what I what I had the time to do when I was like I have nothing to show so I will try to get one up in a reasonable amount of time it will probably be in August. Um, for those of you who are not already in Virtual Stitchers, if you do a search on Virtual Stitch uh, on Facebook for Virtual Stitchers, it is a Facebook group. We hang out in a Google Hangout. Um, it's there's a lot of people that you probably know the names of. Um, I'm in there. Vicky is in there reading and stitching. Um, Heather Link is my homeboy is in there a lot. Sammy J from Sammy J Stitches is in there a lot. Um, EJ comes by from San Sunshine Stitchers. Um, that was really fun to meet her in person because I talked to her on virtual stitchers all the time and so she gave me a big ol' hug and it was fantastic. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, of floss tubers and a lot of non-floss tubers that come hang out and um, we just do ask that if you um, don't feel comfortable being on camera, feel free to turn your camera off but please leave your microphone on so that we can talk to you. Um, it gets, we've had a couple people who would come in and have their, be muted and have their camera off and they would be in there for like hours and we're like we don't know who you are and we don't know why you're in here and we don't feel comfortable talking in front of you so please just you know come in and introduce yourself and just be like hey guys it's me I'm here I just don't like showing you know for one we don't care like we don't care if you're in your pajamas we don't care if you're not wearing a bra we don't care if your hair's up in a messy bun we don't care we're all sitting on our couch anyway and stitching we're not there to it's not a beauty pageant like we're just here sitting sitting stitching <laughs> we don't care we don't care if you if you're sitting there in your like dirty t-shirt and we just we don't care if your house is a mess come and hang out um but if you haven't if you haven't joined virtual stitchers and you're interested please come join us it's a lot of fun um we have had to open a second room because sometimes the hangout gets full because it can only hold 10 people so if you go in and room one is full or if room one is empty check room two because sometimes we'll Room one will be full, we'll go to room two, and then everybody leaves room one and we don't realize it, and so room two is hanging out. Um, and if you're not in School of Magical Stitches, I don't know why, where are you? <laughs> Please come join us, even if you don't like Harry Potter, even if you don't know Harry Potter. We have a lot of people who've never read Harry Potter, know, don't know anything about, about the books. Reading the books is not required. Homework is not required. Don't feel overwhelmed by it. Extra credit is not required. Watching the movies is not required. Reading the extra books is not required. If you just want to come and hang out and check out people's cool stitching, awesome. If you want to come and finish one homework assignment every two months, that's fine. Come hang out. Like, it is there to participate as much as you want or as little as you want. Uh, don't feel like you have to, like, there are so many people who have been like, oh, I felt overwhelmed, so I left. It was too much. It's never too much. If it's too much, it's fine. You don't have to finish anything. There are no penalties for not finishing. Everything that you do finish is points for your house. Um, when you do join, there are three questions that you need to answer. Make sure you answer them. I'm the one that accepts requests. So if I know who you are, I'm just gonna accept you. Um, but if I don't know who you are, please make sure you answer the questions because if you don't answer the questions, I'm not going to accept you. Um, once you are in there, there's find the FAQ, uh, the FAQ file. There's a sorting hat form. Please fill that out. That's way that way we know which house to put you in. We do not put people in houses unless that form has been filled out. It needs to have your first and your last name so that we can connect your Facebook account to you. Um, if you come in and you just say Sharon, we have 15 Sharons in the group. I don't know which Sharon you are. Please say who you are. Um, we've had a lot of people who who are upset because they aren't sorted, and it's like, well, did you fill out the form? And if you did, did you put your last name on it? Because if you come in and you just say, my name is Cindy, 
again, there's 15 Cindy's in the group. I don't know which one you are. And in order for us to make sure, like we, we purge the rosters every few weeks. If you leave the main group, you will be removed from the rosters. Um, that is the only time we ever remove people is if they leave the main group, because that is, that is their way. We take that as somebody saying, I don't want to participate anymore if they leave the main group. Um, so it, in order for us to make sure that you are still in the group, we need to know who you are. If you do the homework, we need to be able to connect your name with your name on the grading sheet. So please make sure that when you fill out the sorting form, you fill it out with your name as it is displayed on Facebook. So if you have your maiden name on Facebook, put your maiden name. If you change your name, so like if you drop your last name and you only have your first and middle name, please tell us because otherwise we don't know who you are and we don't know how to connect your homework to you. So just keep that in mind. We do everything by Facebook display names. Don't give us an email address. Don't give us a username. Don't give us just your first name. We have to be able to connect your Facebook account to the grading sheet. Um, so there's my little pet peeve. Since I keep the rosters, that's something that that's something that irritates me is the people who I would say out of every sorting that I do, I'd say about a th anywhere from a fourth to a third of the people who fill it out have filled it out with just their first name or just a username. I'm like, that's, I can't find you off of that. I need your Facebook name as it is shown on Facebook. Like when I, when I go into the member list, how does you, how do you show up? Um, that's, we, we need that information. Um, otherwise you're not going to get sorted. You're not gonna be able to get points for your homework because we don't know who you are. So please make sure you fill out the sorting form correctly. Rant over. Come join Magical Stitches. You don't have to participate if you don't want to, but please follow the sorting form correctly if you do want to. All right, so I'm really bad at replying to comments. I try to like everybody the comments. I, horrible, horrible, horrible. I do read your comments, I promise. I just never reply to them because nine times out of 10 when I read them, it's I'm standing in line somewhere or like I'm on my way into work and I'm just clearing out notifications. And I was like, oh, that's a sweet comment. Like I should reply to that later and then I never do. I never reply to text messages either. This is a thing with me. Um, so don't think I'm ignoring you just cause I didn't reply to your comment. I'm just really bad at replying to comments. I'm terrible at it. So thank you for everybody that does comment. Oh, by the way, I got my first dislike, ah, my first thumbs down on my second to last video. So apparently somebody didn't like me talking about my, my whips. I don't know. I think it's funny. Um, I know there are some people who, who track how many thumbs downs they get because it's funny. I'm not one of those, but I, I got my first one. So am I a real floss tuber now? I got my first thumbs down. Um, anyway, so thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Um, I did hit over 500 subscribers a while back. I will do a giveaway for it eventually. I just haven't had time to figure out what I'm giving away yet. Cause I don't want to do like, I have a lot of my craft room packed up right now. So I don't want to just be like, Oh yeah, that'll work. Give it away. And I'm like, I want to do something like, you know, fairly decent of a giveaway, something people would be interested in. Um, so I will be doing a giveaway. I will try to get that into the next video. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm getting really close to 700 subscribers. So I definitely need to do a giveaway soon. Cause I'm like way behind on that. Cause I've been over 500 for a while. So again, thank you for everybody who does, who has subscribed. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.